Hello and welcome to week 22 of a series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in the space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk to you about the Application Pool Identity Account, a new feature in IS7 and also one that's been enhanced in IS7.5, or really I should say in Windows Server 2008 R2. There have been some neat improvements for it. So first let me start with a bit of the history. When app pools were first introduced in IS6, the default identity for app pools was network service. And in fact, IS 7.0 also sets network service as the default. However, Windows Server 2008 offered support for a new type of user called a virtual account. And IS leverages this for its own use. So I'll cover a bit more of the theory in a few minutes, but first let me just jump in and give you an idea on what we're looking at here. So when an app pool, it has to have an identity assigned to it. And the default identity is this, this is now with IS 7.5. And the way you can tell what version you're using is you right click on my computer, go to properties, and you can see Windows Server 2008 R2 is 7.5, and if it doesn't say R2, it's 7.0. And so this is actually changed between the two of them. So if we go to advanced settings for an app pool, and we can see here the process model identity, and we can zoom in and we can see this here, their local service, local system, and network service are shown in IS 7.0 but in 7.5 we see this new application pool identity and I'll talk a little bit further because 7.0 also has support for it it just doesn't show it here so if we use this user what this means is we can assign this virtual account to disk and so this isn't like a regular user there's no password to manage so it's great for maintaining passwords if you do a password change you don't have to worry about anything breaking and also the other nice advantage of it is it's a low privileged account only used for what you need here. And so let's go to a right click on Contosa.com and if you, you may have been aware of this, edit permissions is just a shortcut to the folder. And we go into security here and the default settings we have system administrators and users. Well we don't want to have users. It's more permission than we need. Let's remove it and we're going to add this new user and the way you do it, and again this is IS 7.5 only, I'll show you in a minute, we have to do this from the command line in 7.0, but IS app pool, and it's a triple P, A-P-P-P-O-O-L, slash, and then the name of the app pool. I should mention too that if this is a domain controller, be sure to select the locations and the local machine, otherwise it won't be able to find it. Contosa.com in this case. So I hit enter, and you can see here, it, it's added the user. Also, I, let me show you one more thing, is the object types. It's the built-in security, and it's on by default, but if that ha is turned off, make sure the built-in security principles is checked, otherwise it won't work. Now, also notice, if I go and do a search, I'm not going to find it in here. It only has real accounts. You know, it has some my user accounts, but it doesn't have the app pool one, because it's virtual. So it allowed us to type it in, but it it's not there in the find a prompt. You have to know the name. Hopefully future versions are even cleaner and this will allow you to select it. And in my case, I'm only doing read only. I can just do read and write, but you may need to give write or modify permissions depending on what you're doing there. So I'm going to hit OK. And, uh, and actually, if I refresh it, notice that this works. And again, let's just confirm that that's the only setting. I call this the break test. And so if I go to contosa.com, Let's drop this user and refresh and notice that it breaks because it doesn't have permissions in this case to the web.config. So you can see it's exactly that one user that works. So this is the core of it, really, all that you need to know uh, to set it up. Again, let me do it one more time and we're just going to do is space app pool space contoso dot com. Uh, we'll just give it these permissions here and this will work. Now let's dig in a little bit further to understand this more. And let me show you how you need to do this in IS 7.0, if you're using a 7.0 machine, Windows Server 2008. And we need to do it from the command prompt instead to add it. So let's just clean up our environment and let's remove the current one so we don't have it here. And the way we do this is first navigate to it. And actually you can see where I left off here. So I'm in inetpub already. And it's iCackles, that's to edit the Ackles. And I can put in the whole path, 
or I could just type in www.root because it's already in the parent folder. And we're going to grant is, and it's not case sensitive, but I'll show this anyways. And contoso.com. So you can see I put in the name just like before, put in the actual name of the app pool, and then we use parentheses. Y, C, I, and R, X. And this is for where the inheritance is in the container and read permissions. So this has now been granted. And now we can go and edit it. And even in IS 7, once it's been added, you can go and edit it from the UI. So you can go here and give it write permissions, for example, if you need to. And if we go, notice that it works. So that's how you do that in IS 7 or if you want to script it, then you can do this. So let's take a look a little bit further. Let's take a look here at our process identity. And so we're using Process Explorer, another tool from SysInternals, completely free, www.sysinternals.com, and actually a lot of people use this instead of Task Manager even. And so we're going to go here, and our W3WP is a worker process. Right now we only have the one. We could check that. I've covered in previous videos on how to do that. And it's the PID here, 3024. And if we go to the security tab, notice, well, yeah, notice here that our user is the IS app pool contoso.com. So this is actually what it uses on disk. Uh, but also notice, this is really interesting, is other users can get used instead. It's really almost like the groups that it's in. So if we were to grant the IS iUsers user, that will also work. Let's try it and confirm. So let's go here, edit permissions. And first, let's remove Contoso and confirm it breaks. Okay, so we know that that was the user in play. And now we're going to add again. And let's add our user. Yes. Okay, so this user has been granted. Notice it's a di completely different user than last time. And also, if I refresh, notice that it works. So there are a number of other users that can be used instead, and this is helpful. For example, the everyone. If you were to grant everyone access, it's going to work. If you were to grant service or network service, it also works. The users works. So there's a few users here that can work. To have the best security boundary, what you want to do then is make sure that just your particular app pool user. has been granted access. Now also vice versa. Let's switch this. So our current app pool instead, in an advanced settings, we're going to go here and change this to network service, which is a default in IS 7. And notice now it's a network service. And notice if we refresh, this still works. And the reason for that is now there's a new worker process here because once you make a change to the app pool, it refreshes that. And notice now it's running as network service, but within network service, this virtual account is actually injected in. And so when it hits the disk and says, hey, what permissions are needed for me to be able to view you? This user is also used. So you can see here, if you give either network service or Contoso access to disk, it will, it will work. But for the best practice, you want to give this the more specific user because that way other sites that may not have permission for this site will not be able to use it. So I hope that makes sense. Now next week I want to cover the various users in more depth. There's actually multiple users in play, not just the one that I've shown here. And we want to dig in further. But the, t today we just want to look at how do you add this Contoso user. It's a virtual account. Oh, let me show you one more thing here as well. Is If we go to our Windows Services, and usually right here and around the top two, uh, this application host helper service, app host SRV, is the service that's used that creates those mappings. So if this service is ever stopped, then those mappings won't create in the first place. They can actually stop temporarily. I can stop this service and refresh. And notice it works. But it does need to be working there when it's created. So it's just useful to be aware of this particular service and that helper service, how it comes into play.
And one more thing I wanted to bring up as well is the benefits for it is one I mentioned already, the no passwords to manage, and also it's a low privileged account. So those are the nice benefits. It's actually really nice to manage this, especially if you have a shared environment with a lot of sites and you want to manage all the different users. Now the disadvantage or things to watch for is the network access. So what happens when this user tries to access something across the network? And what's going to happen is it's going to look to the remote network service by computer name colon and or sorry computer name dollar sign and so if we see here uh, our computer name right here is is this unique identifier and that's what it sees across the network so it comes in as a computer account so for most cases I prefer to use a custom identity if it needs remote network access I prefer to do that than open it up for the whole computer and so I would go into the app pool and I, first of all I create a custom user I go into here and I do a custom account and assign it here. So in that case, I don't use this special virtual account, uh, but just if it needs network access. If you need to use SQL Server on the same box, you can actually still use this. You can use that same syntax, is app pool slash app pool name, and that will work within SQL Server on the same box. But of course, on the remote box, it comes in as computer name. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you again next week.